Well, good afternoon. Good afternoon to everybody. Welcome to this informational webinar for the presentation of the fourth edition of the Master ICT for Development and Social Good. This is the first master in Italy completely focused around the use of digital technologies in international cooperation. So I'm really glad to be here with you today uh, because this master has proved to be a very positive and growing experience over the years. And which responded to some of the most pressing challenges in today's international cooperation and development. Uh, the master program uh, was born from a fruitful collaboration with University of Turing, represented here today by Professor Dancero and Professor Elisa Bignante. Thank you, Professor Dancero uh, Elisa. Thank you. Yep. And uh, ONGO 2.0, ONG 2.0, which is a network of NGOs that work in the field of international cooperation. Ron, please, you can give out the, the um, slide. Thank you. So the master was born also uh, to the support of the program Innovation for Development, Innovazione per lo Sviluppo, represented today here by Cristina Toscano, which I used this opportunity to thank her. <laughs> thank you. And from the support of the Italian Agency for Development Cooperation, which is the public agency for international cooperation of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Italy. But today, here with us, we have also the representative of the lectures of the master, George Lebrecht, who is a spacecraft operation engineer. You can see George. Wow. Hello. Okay. hello, hello. I'm here. Yeah. As you can see, is the spacecraft operation engineer, software engineer and data expert. He manages in, in the master uh, data for good uh, unit and crash course. So thank you, George, to be here with, with us today. Thank you for having me. And Arianna, Arianna Carboni, master alumni of the last academic year and PhD in nuclear physics. Hi, Arianna. Hi, Silvia. Hi, nice to see you all. Arianna will share with you testimony about the master program and about her experience. And last but not least, Ron Salai, master tutor, will provide an overview of the master curriculum, content, methodologies, uh, as well as respond to your questions. Uh, also, because the main goal of this master's, of this webinar, sorry, is precisely to respond to all of your questions and clarify any doubt that you may have. Mm -hmm. So you can write your question in chat or by raising your hand by using one of the little emoticons in the right hand bottom bar. So I don't want to take more time. Therefore, I give immediately the floor to Cristina Toscana for the first institutional remark. Cristina, thank you. Thank you, Silvia. Thank you uh, all. I'm very happy to be here uh, for this presentation, uh, especially be because I, I, I'm very happy to say that I've seen a little bit uh, all the initial phases of the reflection that brought uh, ONG 2.0 and, and its partners uh, to think about uh, this particular course. It was uh, 2014, 15, I think. 
And um, I'm the project leader of, uh, of the program that is called uh, Innovazione per Sviluppo, Innovation for Development, that is promoted by two Italian uh, banking foundations, uh, Fondazione Cariplo and Compagnia di San Paolo. And um, this master um, and uh, the initial online courses, which was called, if I well remember, ICT uh, for Development, uh, that was run by ONG 2.0. Um, this course was, was uh, part of the reflection that as project we were doing um, about um, what, what kind of skills uh, uh, people working in development uh, need uh, to uh, be more um, prompt to use technology uh, into the development field and what type of capabilities should be uh, reinforced. Um, so there, there was a reflection even at the beginning of, of our project, um, an in-depth um, reflection on um, digital uh, transformation and uh, the importance to include into the project uh, a specific uh, section uh, dedicated to training training uh, ONG staff, but also uh, people, uh, uh, master students or, or students in, in interested into the field of development cooperation and innovation. Because uh, the objective of, inno of Innovazione Proprio Sviluppo is um, try to, to, to create and to uh, a link a channel of, uh, of uh, discussion and productive uh, cooperation between development uh, cooperation and, and all the world of, of innovation, startup and, and university. So um, what we are um, going to do to support the master in this edition, we will uh, offer uh, 10 tuition fee scholarship uh, covering partial costs uh, to the students, so we are happy to do that because it's a concrete uh, uh, way of facilitating the participation to the master. And um, the, the, the cooperation between the University of Turin and ONG 2.0 and the Italian Agency of Development Cooperation is really uh, a, a cooperation that, um, according to us, uh, is creating uh, value uh, and is continuing to create value uh, year by year. So I really wish you uh, uh, the best for this new edition. I do encourage uh, all of you that are listening to uh, go deeper into the, 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 the program and, and really think about uh, enrolling into this fantastic journey. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Cristina Toscano. Um, so I immediately give the floor to Professor Dancero, Master Director, and Elisa Vignante, a member of the scientific committee, the Master. So um, please uh, let, let us to know why the University of Turin is involved in this Master. Hmm? Okay, thank you, Silvia, as the uh, University of Turin we are very pleased to have launched the, this uh, master degree, um, first level uh, master that uh, is now in its fourth uh, year. This collaboration with uh, NGO 2.0 is very important and uh, in some way is part of a wider set of collaboration that uh, we as University of Turin have uh, with NGOs, with local authorities, and uh, many actors in the world of international cooperation. And uh, this master is part of a series of initiatives that, uh, uh, as a university, we organize on the topics of development, of cooperation, and on the ICT. And uh, really, this master joins this uh, specialization that, in particular, we have at the Department of Culture, Politics, and Society at the campus. Uh, uh, Luigi Einaudi, and uh, uh, also it uh, helps us to, to be in touch from one side uh, with um, 
the world of NGOs and all the other uh, organization involved in the in the master all the scholars and specialists that uh, are uh, involved in, uh, in the in training and teaching and teaching and the master that many of them are comes all around the world and also joining uh, with uh, our uh, research at the university of Turin. as uh, you probably know this master is uh, mainly online. It was online also before the the, 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 the pandemic, and uh, with uh, some uh, short period, very intensive uh, short period in presence uh, at uh, this uh, this part face to face will be. We hope that it will be obviously in this situation at the campus Luigi Einaudi, which is uh, one of the most, uh, one of the big uh, uh, location of the University of Turin is a very nice and well uh, uh, structured campus uh, that has been signed by the uh, Archistar Norman Foster. So we wait you uh, both online and both at the campus Luigi Einaudi. Now I give the floor to my friend and colleague Elisa Vignante for another part of this welcome. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, Egidio. Um, yes, just to add something to what Egidio has already said. Um, what I think is particularly interesting in the perspective of the University of Torino is that this master has found, uh, or as it is constantly evolving, works every year towards finding, I would say, um, has found or is finding and is working towards finding a balance between three aspects. The first one is theoretical background and awareness on the ongoing international debates on ICT for development, um, providing students with knowledge on the theoretical frameworks which critically reflect on the use of ICT in development, and also deeply engaged with methodologies but also integrates these reflections and these theoretical insights with critical insights and reflections on the worlds of ICT4D, which is a world full of opportunities, but also full of challenges and uh, of quick evolving realities. So first aspect, uh, a focus also on theoretical backgrounds. The second one, I think it's quite important, is the importance given to real life examples. Uh, and the fact that it exposes students to a variety of real life examples of how ICTs have been used, are used, should be used, um, providing knowledge and providing examples of national, international, local initiatives in the field of ICT, um, as well as providing the ability to critically analyze their impact in the world. So second aspect, real life examples. And third aspect is practice, uh, by giving students the opportunity to experience, to practically experience the development of social innovation projects in several different fields and developing knowledges and skills in effective planning, implementing, managing, managing uh, ICT for these initiatives. Um, and I think it's very appropriate uh, um, to find this mix and balance I'm talking about, uh, because if it's true that international agencies and institutions and nonprofit organizations are increasingly looking for project managers and development workers that are skilled in the use of dig digital innovations, uh, at the same time, without enough critical knowledge and critical engagement and awareness of theoretical debates, ethical issues, challenges, um, the risk is that of developing technical skills without developing the capability to critically analyze the impact of ICTs in people's lives. Um, and also, I think what's very important is the ability of adapting this is in a geographical perspective, these existing examples, methodologies, tools to the specific, specificity of each geographical context and to the specificity of um, local needs, which change from place to place and which con continuously change in time. Um, and also to learn how to prevent the from 
potential risk and failures. Um, so I think that's that's quite interesting of this master program, having found the balance between these three elements. And I think that this is an element that makes it quite relevant in the perspective of our, of our university. And I think I will stop here, but then I will be very happy to um, discuss some more with you if you have questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Vignante and Professor Dancero, too. Uh, now, uh, I'd like to give the floor immediately to George Lebrecht, um, who is a lecturer in, in the master and is a spacecraft operation engineer, as you can see. <laughs> but, well, well. <laughs> but he is also founder of Open Data Kosovo, hmm? mm -hmm. an organization focused of the civic, uh, civic tech that uses digital technologies for social responsibility, uh, government transparency. So uh, it's very interesting in, uh, in our master, he holds the unit about data for good and crash course too. So George, thank you very much to be here. Thank you. Thank you for having me and thank you for the introduction. Um, so I, as was mentioned, I, I work for the European Space Agency and just to elaborate a bit on that context, uh, the mission I work with, we have absolutely no access to our spacecraft because it's orbiting 500 kilometers above us. So all we have is the data and we only downlink about, we only have 10 minutes of window to downlink data for the day. And with that data, we have to take decisions, make decisions, and it could end or continue the mission on a daily basis. So this is the type of environment that I work with in terms of understanding data in order to drive decision. And how does this relate with uh, ICT for development and social good? Well, prior to the space agency, uh, as was mentioned, I worked in civic tech. I worked in using, using technology for social good uh, as part of an organization I founded, Open Data Kosovo. And within that, uh, within that work, I, I very much in practice of working with the data, like I work with the data for our spacecraft, I work with data in order to drive decision making in the civic space. So what my lectures are all about is using data as evidence. How do we use this engineering values of using data as evidence without bias to drive policy making, to drive campaigning, to drive advocacy and activism, because you want something to support your, your mission, and a lot of that support you can draw from data. So it's a very hands-on lecture. We use tools, we look at examples, uh, real-life examples. We learn a bit about programming during a workshop, how to process data, and especially how to appreciate the complexities and challenges of transforming data into something that's actionable. So hope that sounds interesting to you guys, and I'm here if you have any questions about this. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you very much. And Arianna. Arianna Carbone, Hi, Silvia. PhD in nuclear physics and master's student last year. So, hi, Arianna, what about your experience? Hi, Silvia. Thank you for having me here. And uh, hello to all of you who are listening to us. So, yeah, as Silvia said, I am um, I'm a former student of uh, the second edition of uh, this master in ICT for development and social good. And um, I must say that this uh, master has been uh, kind of a turning point in my professional career. So as Silvia said, uh, um, yes, I am a physicist and um, I had done uh, fundamental research for 10 years. Uh, so from 2009 to 2019, up until the time I joined the master. So I was really interested in learning how uh, all kinds of uh, technologies we have around uh, us nowadays uh, can really have an impact on um, the world uh, around us. And so by digging into information, I found this master and I thought, okay, I will enroll. And uh, after this master, uh, now I actually am not 
anymore. I'm still a physicist, but I'm not doing fundamental research. Actually, nowadays I work at the uh, ICT department of uh, INFN, which is the Italian National uh, Lab for Nuclear Physics, but specifically in the ICT department, uh, where I work on projects which are related to, um, uh, let's say, social innovation. A lot of projects uh, related to a lot of topics, which can be machine learning or blockchain technology. Technologies. So, um, so really, the master has really, let's say, um, uh, been a turning point in, uh, in my career. Um, so, from the point of view of the experience uh, in the master, well, um, it's been, uh, let's say, a wonderful journey. Um, so, I think um, I'm not sure who are the people now listening to us, but uh, let's say the, this master can be both for people more of a humanistic profile, but also of a more technical profile, because it's really um, a comprehensive view of all the ways um, ICTs can be be used for uh, international development projects, but also how uh, these projects, these projects, one, one should approach these projects. So um, one learns uh, a lot of things. Uh, let's say I had no idea about uh, the entire um, realm of international development and projects in international development. And I learned all of this during the master. I learned, for example, um, the theory of change, but I also learned how to approach projects in explaining us uh, um, there are also uh, let's say more techie uh, modules uh, which will uh, really uh, uh, teach you how to use uh, uh, programming languages to use data science but don't be scared if you are let's say more of a humanistic uh, profile uh, is perfectly doable for for everybody because uh, uh, the, um, uh, the 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 lectures are always there they're really helpful and most of all it's the group everybody comes from different perspectives and everybody helps each other so you're never really alone whether you are more of a technical side or more of a let's say uh, international development uh, um, profile and um, uh, so I really encourage you whatever is your uh, let's say uh, knowledge or let's say university uh, degree or even uh, uh, professionality I think it's uh, it's really I encourage you to um, to enroll and just the last uh, thing I wanted to say I think the um, the great thing of being online although now we are all a bit fed up of the online but the great thing of this master being online is that there are people from all over the world and this would not be possible, obviously, if we were somewhere physical. So we have to give up the physical location and uh, let's say go into this virtual uh, uh, classroom, but uh, we uh, we gain so much because there are people from uh, from Africa, from Europe, from the States, from uh, from Asia, from very different places. And this is really a unique learning path because you learn um, you, you're learning together with different people and different perspectives from really different uh, uh, points of the world. So it's uh, it's really I think a unique experience, and uh, I encourage you to enroll. And if you can enroll in the Full master model because uh, the intensive weeks are really important um, and uh, I imagine if it's a budget problem there are also scholarships so don't uh, hesitate to apply. Thank you Silvia for your time. Thank you, and thank you, thank Ron. you Ariane for your testimony. Thank you very much and uh, Ron, uh, Ron Salai I give you the floor you can explain the master program content, methodologies. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope you can hear me well. It's 6 p.m. here in Italy. Uh, I, I assume you're a bit tired from all the day uh, sort of online work and remote work and stuff like that. So I want to start with a joke. Perhaps you will like it. And the joke uh, happens in East Germany, the defunct East Germany. So there were two friends who were living in East Germany and one of them received a letter to go to work in Siberia and he established a code with his friend. He knew that his letters would be read by the censors, 
And so he established a code with his friend and he told his friend, listen, if you receive the letter with the blue ink, it means that the letter, it's true. So the stuff that I'm writing on the letter is true. And if the letter is written with a red ink, the red color, uh, then it's false. And after a few months, his, his friend received the first letter and it was, uh, you know, explaining uh, the life. So my dear friend, I'm here in Siberia, I'm working here. Uh, the cinemas are beautiful, you know, we are watching movies every night. I have a beautiful apartment, we have lots of food. Uh, we go around in bars, there are every night concerts and so on and so forth. But the only thing we miss is the red color. So uh, that's precisely what we try to do with the mass states, uh, providing the red color, if we can use that metaphor, to articulate really the problems, the challenges that uh, international cooperation and the development uh, faces today, but also, as Elisa, uh, Professor Elisa said, uh, to sort of look critically at the technologies we employ today uh, in the development sector. Now, uh, this master, um, uh, as, as said in the beginning, is organized by University of Turin and uh, ONG 2.0 under the patronage of um, Italian Agency for uh, Cooperation and Development and with the great support of uh, Compagnia San Paolo and Fondazione Cariplo within the program of uh, Innovation for Development. Um, and uh, these are a number of networks, partners, organizations that support a master program in one way or another, uh, either by providing internship uh, places or providing uh, support in, in curriculum, in scientific committee, uh, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, Christina mentioned that our collaboration started in 2014-15. This is one of the screenshots where, you know, online meetings and masters and courses were not very much, you know, trendy as they are today. Uh, and uh, already in 2014 and 15, we organized a long-term training course. And when I say long-term, it means uh, about um, uh, eight months. Uh, where we try to sort of experiment about uh, uh, and learn about ICT in development, um, but also try to see where is the gap uh, that we can fill in um, education-wise uh, in terms of um, developing competencies of the new generation of uh, development uh, workers, professionals. Now, uh, I think there are, um, Elisa, uh, Professor Elisa Vignante mentioned these three things, which is theoretical background, real life examples and the practice. And I think pretty much um, that sort of, um, you know, uh, um, 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 covers, you know, the, the, the features uh, or the, the elements that we, we kind of um, uh, go transdisciplinary in the, uh, in the, in the curriculum. Uh, so uh, we try to provide a holistic approach uh, to, to our students. That is, uh, we don't dive in only to technology, but we look also uh, at the development, development theory, uh, international cooperation, and try to reflect how that has changed over the years and how technology can play a role in it or can fail it. Um, then uh, we take examples, do lots of practical work. George mentioned some um, uh, through um, crash courses, through um, uh, assignments and so on and so forth. And lastly, uh, theory is yet uh, important because um, uh, uh, you know, the, the practice without theory can be very deorienting, but also, you know, the, the, the theory without practice can be also sterile. So we try to combine uh, all of them together. Um, the master's um, main objectives are five. So we try to explore, review various local, national, international initiatives in the field of information communication technologies and critically analyze them. Uh, this means we, we do plenty of work uh, across models, uh, across uh, crash courses with case studies. Uh, we, invite, um, we invite speakers or professionals from the field to provide first-hand experiences, whether it is on agriculture, whether it is on humanitarian work, uh, on data, and so on and so forth. But also, um, uh, time by time, we organize also seminars, uh, thematic seminars. Uh, we try to pick up a theme and go a bit more deeply in discussing and and, and, and learning about it. Uh, the second one is to uh, equip students with theoretical knowledge. Uh, and here we do uh, lots of work on, uh, on new frameworks, new methodologies, uh, from theory of change to, um, uh, to human-centered design, and how you apply actually those uh, uh, theoretical works and frameworks in the practice. And that's where the third objectives comes in, uh, where uh, basically uh, we try to uh, uh, build really the competencies of, of, of students on uh, practical skills 
uh, using, adopting, or reappropriating um, various tools, platforms, technologies um, um, uh, for uh, for uh, ICT for for development, and we do this. Um, and not only on the crash courses, which are one week long uh, intensive uh, courses um, to learn for a specific uh, technology, but also during the module assignments, during the in-class practical work um, and so on. Um, and last two um, uh, objectives are really to establish a community of practitioners. Uh, we try to engage and, and stay in touch with all our past uh, master's alumni uh, so we either engage them in uh, various collaborations, in initiatives, uh, create a community around it, uh, but also facilitate the peer-to-peer -peer learning uh, with those who are in the master. Um, and lastly, uh, really uh, trying to immerse students in the field work through internship programs. And this is particularly uh, for specifically for uh, full master model students uh, who are required to accomplish the internship program out of which uh, they are expected to produce the final project, which is the thesis uh, work uh, for, for, for the graduation. Um, master program. So uh, a bit about the structure of the master. Uh, so it's nine, to nine plus three months. So there are lectures starting in November and ending um, in July, uh, first, second week of July. And then we have also 450 hours of internship, uh, which also should be accomplished uh, uh, from January, February to October. Uh, in your case, in case somebody of you will be enrolled uh, 2022. Um, so all lectures are uh, online. Uh, they are very interactive. Uh, perhaps I can uh, show you just very brief snapshot of the yesterday. And the reason lecture. why this is um, useful from my point of view. Oops. My point of view is it's it's it is actually AI in the sense that it is a, a uh, so, so uh, basically uh, also during the class uh, we try uh, to do as much as possible uh, where necessary uh, practical work. Uh, so yesterday's class was on uh, artificial intelligence and facial recognition in development. Um, and all the lectures are recorded as you have seen. Uh, so the lectures um, uh, we are shared in the Moodle, so we have an um, e-learning platform uh, provided by the University of Turin uh, where we uh, sort of uh, organize the whole curriculum, syllabus, uh, reading materials, assignments, exams, the forum for lecture, the social forum for discussion, uh, and also all the recordings of the, of the, of the, of the lectures. Each module um, has a module assignment. This is not obligatory and this is not graded. So uh, anyone who wishes to complete the model assignment is, is encouraged and welcomed, but you will not receive a grade on this. This is more as a moment of practice uh, um, to uh, put in practice really the, the stuff you have learned uh, during the model. Uh, again, uh, online internal space, we use mainly Mo Moodle uh, for all our collaborations and work. And lastly, we have the crash courses and the internship. Uh, there are three crash courses. Uh, the crash courses start on Monday and ends on Friday afternoon. Uh, and basically it's one week um, intense work on uh, basically uh, three themes, human-centered design, data, so collect data collection, data visualization, data publication, uh, various types of data visualizations and so on. And the last one is on, on internet uh, cybersecurity. And we looked at from the perspective of development and humanitarian uh, work. Uh, and, and that means that we, we, we see also um, uh, how uh, and why that is a key theme today in development work. And now all the lectures are provided online. We use Zoom, uh, we use very interactive participatory methodologies uh, and crash courses. Now the crash courses, uh, we, in the first edition, 2019-20, uh, we did all the three crash courses in the campus of the University of Turin. Uh, but due to COVID-19 pandemic, we had to transform everything online. Uh, so uh, also the crash courses uh, for the moment are being held online. And we are hopeful and optimistic that by next year, we might return. I'm looking also to Professor Bignante and Dancero. 
uh, we might return to the campus uh, for, 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 for the crash courses. Let's cross our fingers. Um, now, uh, th there is a differentiation between two models of the master we, pr we offer, okay? There is the full master, master model and the online master model. Now, the difference is, is that um, the full master model, uh, um, you, are, you are required uh, to accomplish crash courses. So online lectures and crash courses are around 290, 287 hours of, uh, of, of lectures. Uh, online and again in presence in Turin. Uh, we require uh, around 550 hours of individual study in the sense that, you know, preparing for the model, reading the key materials, uh, module assignments, exams, and so on and so forth. 450 hours of internship program. Uh, and then uh, you have the exams, final project, uh, and in the end, uh, the successful candidate will receive the master diploma. Whereas the online master model um, is, not, um, is not required um, uh, to attend the crash courses. So only online lectures. Uh, individual study obviously remain the same because you will nevertheless participate in all the lectures and attend or uh, provide, submit um, assignments. Uh, you will be required to do the final project, but uh, online uh, master model students are not required uh, to do the internship. And in the end, um, uh, the students of this model will receive certificate of attendance and portfolio with the, uh, with the description of the master program. And I think this is also an answer to the Max Amanu question, whether everything is online. Um, now a bit about the content curriculum of the master. We have five units, uh, development and social innovation challenges, technology for development and human-centered design, uh, unit three is on data, data for social good. Unit four is a uh, very uh, multidisciplinary uh, ICT in development sectors, and I will explain uh, in a few moments. And the last one, it, it looks a bit more into future trends in ICT for development uh, and into more kind of new emerging themes and, 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 and work and technologies around AI, uh, financial inclusion, uh, digital financial inclusion, and uh, also blockchains. Now, I, I will go very briefly also to the curriculums. You also have a, a rough idea of uh, what the master is about. I invite you to carefully read the program uh, in, the master, in the master's website. Uh, you have an abstract for each module and each unit, uh, so you can also get more information about it. Uh, so the, 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 the unit one, which we call Development and Social Innovation Challenges, it's one of the key moments uh, on, uh, on that uh, element that Ariana mentioned, whether you are um, a student with technical technological profile or you are a student with humanistic uh, profile background, this unit tries to bring uh, everybody on the same page. Uh, so try to look a bit at the development challenges, international cooperation, project management, and then uh, for those who actually are not familiar with technology, it, it brings also an introduction to the uh, ICT infrastructure and, 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 and what is the whole landscape uh, of that. And uh, so uh, when we dive, deep dive into a more, uh, more specific technologies, you actually are familiar with the broad infrastructure uh, of, of ICT. Uh, the Unit 2 uh, Technology for Development in Human Centered Design uh, looks at two uh, very much used uh, concepts, uh, so technology for development. Uh, where we, uh, uh, where we, uh, so the first try to deconstruct a bit, you know, this whole uh, utopia around technology for development and how technology is changing the world, and then try to rework it out and why uh, that can play a big role uh, into into development. So uh, various technologies and working a lot with examples, cases, uh, and 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 real life uh, experiences, uh, examples. And the model two um, is is more methodological model. Uh, where we try to look at the fundamentals of human-centered design. Uh, so one of the biggest challenges um, of the organizations, agencies, is really to center the intervention around people, around communities. And we try to do this, you know, methodologically uh, through uh, human-centered design. And we have also the full crash course uh, on this theme uh, uh, later on. 
the unit three, uh, unit three is uh, specifically on data. George is here with us and he leads the first model uh, on ICT4. We call it data collection, but it's uh, more than that. It's data, understanding the data, understanding you know, the whole open data movement, uh, but also uh, looking at various uh, data visualizations uh, um, and, 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 and publications as well. Um, and then we take a um, more sort of um, uh, ethical approach to the data with Stuart Campo, where we look at uh, data, um, uh, ICT for mapping and emergencies, and we look how uh, ICT actually can play, you know, have played a key role in emergencies. Stuart has led, you know, UNICEF's um, technological humanitarian team in various um, uh, corners around the world. And he also tries to look a bit more critically on that in the sense that uh, how ethics are sort of, you know, escaping uh, from, from these interventions and how we should return them uh, back into it. Uh, the, the, the unit four, which is the, the largest unit and the multidisciplinary one, it looks ICT uh, from uh, in, di in different development sectors. Um, and it, you can see, for example, we start with ICT for health where we do lots of work around, you know, uh, applications or apps around uh, ICT for health, ICT for civic engagement in agriculture environment. This year we had, for example, um, an expert from uh, South Africa who was uh, sort of explaining more how new technologies are being used to, for, uh, for coffee, uh, coffee corps. Um, and then we uh, try to wrap it up this unit around um, our ICT for democracy, human rights and activism and reflect about, you know, how we can actually, you know, introduce human rights standards within all sort of technological interventions uh, we might have. Uh, the last uh, unit uh, looks at the future trends. So again, uh, uh, we, 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 uh, we uh, start with financial inclusion in developing countries. Um, and uh, then we move on with um, a bit info security in AI in humanitarianism. Uh, we look, uh, you know, the role of AI, understanding AI, and also doing lots of practical work and, and playing with it, um, uh, and, and facial recognition as well. Um, and lastly, we conclude with the blockchain technology. Uh, really, blockchain is a very complex theme, uh, but we try to uh, sort of reflect a bit, you know, what has been done in the, in, the, in the social application of it, social side of it, not commercial, uh, and uh, really... Um, uh, uh, trying to do, um, you know, lecture by lecture and exercise, which then uh, concludes with uh, with the assignment. Uh, crash courses. Uh, so I, I mentioned the first one. It's dedicated to the human centered design, um, and I shall mention that uh, each unit corresponds to one exam. So you have to uh, complete um, uh, after each unit one exam. And then uh, each crash course as well corresponds to an exam. Uh, so the crash courses are graded. Uh, in that sense, um, the entire week it's an intensive work, which then concludes with the final project that you are asked to be delivered either on the spot or a week, two weeks after, uh, based on agreement with the lecturer, which then will be graded. Um, in the, in the, uh, when we were doing the crash courses at the campus of the University of Turin, we also organized, um, you know, field visits, um, uh, going to um, uh, visit, you know, entities, organizations, social startups at the, at the Turin, uh, or inviting, you know, professors to hold seminars or guest speakers um, um, uh, about the theme of the, of the deep topic. Um, the crash course too is again with George on data. Uh, we work uh, with with uh, with a more complex softwares, uh, R Studio and other um, 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 technologies, and really going you know step by step uh, from you know processing data collection to uh, data visualization and then you know data publication of this um, uh, of this um, of the work. And we work with with the with the, with the concrete data sets uh, and concrete themes uh, as well. Um, and the last bit is on, on cybersecurity. And we try to really look at it from the development humanitarian perspective. Uh, we have seen how, uh, you know, um, 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 data are becoming important and important, but also, you know, the sort of negative practices around uh, data thefts, 
um, you know, surveillance, profilization, and we have seen organizations and also international organizations really being uh, targeting uh, of this. And we try to provide, you know, essentials uh, of, 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 of cybersecurity uh, to, uh, to, to, to the students. Um, uh, I know there are some questions, I will pick them in the end. Uh, again, I said exams, so uh, these are the exams uh, which um, uh, are required only for the full master model students. Uh, we have also the internship program, which has 18 credits and the final project four credits. Uh, all the exams are held online, so we have the Moodle system um, where you basically sign in and go through the exam and, and then you will receive the grades. And uh, detailed syllabus and calendar uh, with all the lectures, dates and hours and so on and so forth will be sent just before the master start. I can, however, anticipate that um, the lectures are held twice a week on Monday and th Thursday and all the lectures are held in the same day and in the same uh, schedule. So 5.30 Italy time, CST uh, to 7.30. So there are two hours uh, lectures, so four hours a week, uh, two hours on Monday and two hours on Thursday. I know this is one of the questions we receive very often, so I wanted just to uh, take it off. Uh, for the internship, again, um, it consists of 450 hours and it should accomplish between the period of minimum three months and maximum six months. An internship program uh, can start starting from January 2022 uh, and completed no later by 15th of October 2022. Uh, so uh, there are two options that you can do uh, the internship. Do it yourself, DIY. Uh, that means that if you are, for example, working in an organization, working in an agency or somewhere, and you would like to have the internship, uh, within the, your working place, then you can do that uh, or you can find an organization uh, uh, which you would like to do it and then uh, you just uh, go under the uh, accreditation process with University of Turin and uh, the option too is you do it with us. So we have a partnership with a large number of organization, entities, social startups, uh, not only from Italy but from other corners of the world. Uh, and you can select one of them uh, and then uh, obviously you have to undergo uh, to an interview process, selection, uh, and if you are successful then you do uh, the internship with that organization. Uh, again, the team of the master, uh, seen some of us are here, uh, uh, but uh, we, do, we do provide uh, lots of support uh, to, to, to the students from different uh, points of view. Uh, are either you know arranging internships or supporting with uh, curriculum or uh, educational uh, journey um, or exams and so on and so forth. Um, we are hopeful or optimistic, let's say that we can uh, will be ready to open enrollments by end of June or at, at most beginning of July. However, I kindly ask you to um, uh, in, to visit our website ICT for socialgoodmaster.eu. Uh, you can read more, uh, all the information I've provided, you can read more about curriculum, uh, you can read more, particularly if you would like to uh, apply for scholarship or to enroll uh, with tuition fee, all the uh, steps and procedures about application and also what documents you are required to submit and where. So we have updated all this information and you can also uh, go and visit there. Uh, so um, uh, I, I'm, I can, I'm concluding now, so uh, just checking. Oh, thank you, thank you very much, Ron. Uh, there are some questions in the chat. Yeah. Can someone specialize or we have to cover all the models? Now, uh, actually, we um, all the models uh, should be covered um, because that's, uh, as I said, one of the main features of this master, which is, you know, having a holistic approach to the overall theme of ICT for development. Uh, and uh, if you want them to specialize further, obviously uh, we can support you on that. But uh, uh, as part of this master program, you should uh, actually, you know, uh, follow, attend and uh, participate in all the models. Uh, what is the language of instruction of this master? Obviously English, it's everything done in English.
other questions you can also pick up microphone if you wish to speak. yes no um there is a question from uh, abudum or I, I don't know <laughs> the name I would like to know how one may access full scholarship for the master degree. Yeah, uh, so uh, basically you have to go uh, in our website. There is a scholarship section here. And uh, for now, you can't submit obviously your uh, candidacy because um, uh, the, the applications are closed for now. Um, but uh, you uh, are, you have here all the requirements, application instructions, uh, the application form will be soon available here uh, as soon as we open the application procedures, all the documents you need to submit, uh, and so on and so forth. So if you go to our website, scholarships, then um, uh, you will find all the information. Obviously, uh, you can write us questions at any time and we'd be happy to reply if you have any problem. Yes, there are also um selection criterion so you can see it's very useful to see selection criterion yes scholarship yes. yeah exactly it's somewhere here here very good how are crash courses structured uh irene could you please specify what do you mean structured So until Irene maybe specifies, I pick up another question. Yes. Uh, which on uh, wrong? I suppose that she she wants to ask uh, uh, how we organize them, uh, how many days, uh, how many hours per day. Yeah. Uh, so um, with exam. Okay. Um, so uh, crash courses at the campus. Uh, so uh, as you you can see it here. Uh, the Crash Course 1 includes 31 hours of practical work, Crash Course 2 includes 27 hours, and Crash Course 3, 23 hours. And we split these hours based into five days. And we, we have done this more intensively when we were at the campus. Obviously, doing it online, it's, um, it's too heavy. And this is one of the feedback we have received from the students. And therefore, we try to sort of, you know, uh, lightening down and we usually do you know from uh, midday to 5 36 afternoon um, uh, every day obviously with breaks and uh, um, and and the content it's varied a lot I mean from human centered design to data and cyber security but also the methodology of it it's very different uh, Francesca is asking which are the organization where we can do the internship uh, really, they are they are uh, diverse. I mean, we have a number of organizations from Italy. Silvia can provide more info, uh, but we have also from other parts of the world with Bach Society in Netherlands. Um, then we have uh, in Kosovo with uh, UNICEF's Innovations Lab and um, uh, Open Data Kosovo and also IPCA Foundation. Uh, we have um, um, in other parts um, uh, in, in Romania and, and so on. I can't remember now everybody, but um, uh, if you wish, we can also um, be in touch via email and uh, and explain to you more. Will the exams be written or oral? Does the final project have to be linked to the internship? Uh, yes, Irene. So exams are written. Uh, so they are done in the Moodle. Uh, basically, uh, if you go here, uh, we have here uh, the whole Moodle. And if you see, here is the exam too. You click here and then you undergo uh, to the, you enter into the exam and you uh, basically take the exam. You have uh, certain hours to do it and you go through questions and you complete. Uh, final project, does the final project have to be linked to the internship? Yes. Uh, so we uh, think that the internship is the, the sort of the key moment where you actually apply the learnings um, or unlearnings uh, to the, to the, to the real world, uh, so during your internship uh, work, and then outcome of which you present the final project. So we do expect that the final project is linked. Uh, I mean, or as is a is a is a is an output of the of the of the internship. Are you 
other questions? Everything is it clear? Okay, what is the percentage of absences granted? Uh, so we organize the lectures in a way that are um, 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 feasible uh, also uh, for, 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 for employers. Uh, that is, uh, that's why we organize you know, twice a week and in the afternoon after the working hours. Obviously, working hours now have changed for everybody, uh, but you know, what what's supposed to be a normal working hour in eight to five or whatever it's uh, it is in different countries uh, so they organize afternoon obviously uh, there is a certain um uh, certain um uh, flexibility uh from the workers uh, so i think it's about what 15 20 percent of the lectures you are missed and obviously in some emergency cases that can uh, exceed slightly uh, but uh yeah i mean we 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 look case by case and evaluate uh, based on various circumstances that are presented. Okay, so it seems there are no more questions. Good. So I think we can close this webinar. If you have any question, you can write us by email. You can check the website. So don't worry. <laughs> we are here for you. OK, so we can thank you very much. Thank you very much to all, to Professor Dancero, Bignante. George Lebrecht, Ariana, Ron, eh, thank you to all. <laughs> and so uh, we, we wait for you. Hmm? We, we are waiting for you, for, for the master, and for any information if you need some, something else. OK. Well, thank you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye, bye. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Bye. -bye. <laughs>